Good afternoon, all of you. Welcome back to our webinar process. So this is Krishna sir. So we are going to start a very important question for second semester. Okay. So we'll discussing about there is no time for a second semester because of your first semester should start on fourth semester. And I think August eighth, August. Month uh, August month end uh, uh, September month uh, on the first week uh, your exams also be very soon. Okay, today we are going to be discussing about very important thing. So that is uh, migration in birds or flight adaptation in birds. So these are the two questions very important for uh, will come examination. Okay, so today very very important. Don't miss the till the end. You must be come patiently. You must be uh, stay in the classroom, virtual classroom. Okay. Now let us. Uh, So screen visible, ma? Okay, so let us today, we are going to discussing about So migration birds, so so migration birds, uh, the migration, what purpose the birds are, they are going to migrating from one place to other place. Okay. So that uh, facts, uh, we are going to discussing it now. See, uh, outline of uh, by migration in birds, that is a definition of uh, what is migration and what are the migration facts? What are the migration uh, flyways? Why do birds are migrating? And types of bird migration, disadvantage of migration. Okay. So what is bird migration? Okay. Bird migration is the regular seasonal movement. Bird migration is a regular seasonal movement. The birds, they are going to from move from one place to other place for the copulation, for the feeding, for the scarcity, for the geographical uh, effects. Okay. Third, this is the regular seasonal movement. Often the north to south along a flyway between the breeding and winter grounds. Many species of the bird migrate, it occurs mainly in the northern hemisphere where the birds are funneled to specific routes by natural barriers such as the Mediterranean Sea or Caribbean Sea. So, this type of uh, for the birds, they are going to migrate from one place to other place from south to long. Uh, south, uh, north to south, but the long distance for the food purpose, for the scarcity purpose, for the population purpose, they are going to migrate. Like uh, in uh, natural barriers, so like natural barriers, also the birds which are going to uh, uh, migrate from Mediterranean Sea to Caribbean Sea. Okay, what the word word migration? Remember one thing. See. Uh, the word migration has come from the Latin word migrare, migrare, which means going from one place to other. According to L. Thomas, Thompson, according to L. Thompson, 1926, the word uh, migra migration may be described as a changes of habitat, periodically recurring and alternating in the direction, which tends to secure optimum environment. Conditions at all times, bird migration that means uh, they are going to migrating from one place to other place from for the copulation, for the scarcity, for the food purpose. So, the migration of birds we are seeing in the uh, slide migration of birds they are going to uh, easily uh, flying uh, on the sky 
So how the what are the mechanism is are involving the flying of mass, flying of birds. At least, uh, at least uh, four thousand species of bird. How many species? Four thousand species of the bird are regular, regular migration, which is about forty percent of the total number of birds in the world. Birds can reach a great highest as they migrate. Okay, so added. Geese are the highest flying migratory birds. What are the birds, ma? The geese birds are highly highest flying uh, migratory birds up there, reaching a uh, okay. The reaching of uh, So may I add one more? Okay, okay, right. Thank you. So the headed geese are highest fly migratory birds, reaching altitude altitude of up to five and of uh, five and of miles above sea level while flying over the Himalayas in India. So, but the bird with the record for the highest altitude ever is rappel griffon. Rappel griffon. Vulture which coiled with the plane thirty seven thousand feet in nineteen seventy five, and was unfortunately sucked into its jet into Indian migratory flights. Simply, how many species? Ma, four thousand species. They are uh, mainly the birds are regular migrants from one place to other place. Nearly forty percent of total birds in the world they are going to migrating from one place to other place. The great highest to them migrate. Okay. And uh, the Arctic term, the Arctic Arctic uh, term has the longest migration of any bird in the world. These uh, blank capped and uh, red billed birds can be flying more than forty nine thousand seven hundred miles. Remember, forty nine thousand seven hundred miles in a year, making uh, a round trip between their breeding uh, uh, breeding grounds in the Arctic uh, and Antarctic regions. So where they spend their winters, the lucky bird, the lucky bird gets to see a two summer as a year, and over its a lifespan of more than thirty years. The flights can be add, but the flight can be add of the equivalent of three trips to moon and back. Speaking of long distance, a northern northern uh, that means a uh, vidya to travels to nearly nine thousand miles. Each way between the Arctic to Antarctica, Arctic to Africa, giving it one largest ranges of songbird. What makes the amazing feat in the tiny bird weight loss? Then that means uh, an ounce, an average. When they are going to before they are going to migrating, their size to be reduced. So with this type of uh, flight adaptation topics, we'll discussing about our flight adaptation. So the award of uh, Mainly, fastest bird. The award for uh, the fastest bird goes to Great uh, Snipe. It flies uh, around four thousand two hundred miles at a speed of the sixty uh, sixty milli per hour, sixty meter per hour. Uh, the boar tail godwit can fly more nearly seven thousand miles without a stopping, making the bird the longest recorded and non-stopping flight. So this bird. Which is going to seven thousand miles without uh, any break. That is a record. Even the bird that done that don't fly migrate. Uh, different birds are there. Emus, the largest Australian bird, I mean, travel for miles uh, and food to find food. Okay now, so these emus are unable to fly, but they are migrating. That means they are walking. So through the on foot, uh, find a food for many of the population. Like penguin migrates by swimming. For example, the emus are there walking, and penguins are they are going to swimming from one place to other place. They are going to migrate, right? The major, what is the major wintering areas for the North American? Major wintering wintering areas for North American migrating birds are are the southern United States of Central America. These four major flyways south, that is. Uh, the south region 
the atlantic flyway mississippi flyway the flyway and central flyway and the uh, pacific flyway migrate migration flyway as well these are the different flyways are there that is atlantic flyway mississippi flyway and uh, flyway and central flyway and uh, pacific flyway and uh, migratory uh, migration flyways are these are the types of fly flyways are there in this uh, mainly northern america to southern united states of america so why the birds the do the birds are going to migrate why they are going to migrating from one place to other place that means okay so the birds uh, the reasons are complex not if you understand but a simple explanation is food so the birds why the birds are they are going to migrating from one place to other place means simply the food food and safe place to breed that means food safe place to breed that means copulation reproduction birds which breed in the summer the birds which breed in the summer in the extreme north such as the summer in the arctic benefit from the abundance of food as a plants insects life flourish in the long daylight so hours that's why these birds are going to migrate and because of few large permanent predators predators can survive the harsh winter many birds that breed in the arctic simply lay their eggs on the ground being able to fly they can avoid the harsh winter conditions okay be the first to arrive to enjoy the summer benefits so these uh, these birds are going to migrating from one place to this place arctic to antarctic okay in this uh, before the avoid of winter and then they are going to enjoy that tail and then we will go to migrate okay next uh, one of the one of the cause that one, food and copulation the second uh, behavior is inherited the migrating behavior is inherited in the birds however birds will not migrate in the absence of certain physiological environment such a uh, certain physiological environment because of few of the few, few of the birds are unable to fly in the late summer they decrease the sunlight decrease the sunlight stimulate their migrating birds that is pituitary gland and to produce hormone pituitary gland to produce hormone that is prolactin and its adrenal gland prolactin and its adrenal gland to produce a hormone corticosterone charma corticosterone these hormones in turns cause the birds accumulate uh, large amounts of the fat just under the skin providing them will enough energy for long migratory flights the birds are they are migrating from long distance they mainly the pituitary gland is a major play role the hormone is called prolactin and one more hormone is called uh, corticosterone that is a adrenal gland hormone these are the hormones to balance the to maintain the flying adaptation for long migratory birds okay so this is very very important and uh, this migration may be different types of migration is there what type of migration we are going to see what type of migration right see the type of types of migration number 1 latitudinal migration number 2 longitudinal migration number 3 altitudinal or vertical migration number 4 partial migration number 5 total migration number 6 vagrant irregular migration okay number 7 seasonal migration okay and number 8 diurnal migration these are the migration these are the so these are the migration what is it now these are the migration so 
seasonal migration and diurnal migration also there. Okay. So these are the types of uh, migrations we are uh, nocturnal migration. What type of migration? Remember one thing. That is one of the number one. Latitudinal migration. Number two, latitudinal migration. Number three, altitudinal migration. Number four, partial migration. Number five, total migration. Number six, uh, number six, vagrant migration. Number seven, seasonal. Number eight, diurnal. Number nine, nocturnal migration. Also. These are the migrations are they the birds. Okay, now let us one uh, see what is that? Lateral migration usually means the means of the movement from north to south, north to south, vice versa. Latitudinal migration, they are the birds that are going to migrate from north to south and vice versa, south to north. So, for the food, for the population, for the breeding, for the scarcity, for the uh, geographical uh, environmental changes. Cuckoo birds, cuckoo breeds in the India and spends in the summer at the south east Africa. Okay, now the cuckoo breeds in India and spends the lot of time in the summer at southeast Africa. Thus, our distance about seven thousand two fifty kilometers. How much, ma? Seven thousand two fifty kilometers. Some tropical birds migrate during the rainy season to the outer tropics to breed and return, and central tropics to dry season. Okay. Uh, puffin, puffinus, the great uh, shade water, breeds in small island and migrate as far as Greenland. In many returns, few months, they are going to, uh, this is the lateral migration of introduction. Okay, next. What is latitudinal migration? What is latitudinal migration, right? So latitudinal migration, penguins migrate, okay, migrate by swimming and cover as considerable distance, a uh, few hundreds of miles. Like uh, Adma, they are going to migrate. They are going to migrate from south to north, north to south. Again, they come back. And uh, longitudinal migration. What is longitudinal migration, right? So longitudinal migration occurs when the birds migrate from east to west. Latitude means the bird they are going to from north to south, south to north, vice versa. But longitudinal, the migration when occurred, the bird migrate from east to east to west, okay, and vice versa, west to east. Example: sterlings. The example was sterling, the sarnas. Bulgarians, a resident of East Europe, and they are migrating from West Asia. They are migrating from Europe to West Asia, migrate toward the Atlantic coast. California girls and resident breed in Uth, migrate uh, westward to winter the specific uh, regions. This is the cost. Simply, longitudinal migration of the birds, which are going to migrating from one place to other place, Okay, right? So, and vice versa, like uh, east to west, west to east. That is called a migration. Right? And uh, altitudinal migration. Altitudinal migration. The altitudinal migration occurs in mountainous regions. Mountainous region, of course. Uh, mountainous region, but so the bird they are going to from bottom to mountain. Bottom to mountain. The birds are going to from high altitude. That is called altitude migration occurs in the mountain regions. Many birds in inhabiting the mountain, like peaks, migrate to lowlands during the winter. During the winter. And golden flower. That is a golden flower, pulvialis. The golden flower, pulvialis, starts from Arctic tundra to goes to up to uh, that means plain uh, Argentina covering of distance nearly how much? Remember one thing? 11,250 kilometers. How much ma? 
11,250 km they are migrating from one place to other place. That is altitude. Simply ma, altitude means uh, altitude means the bird they are going to from migrating from bottom to mountain, bottom to mountain. So that is a uh, part uh, very important. And partial migration. Partial migration is only several members of the group. Several members of the group take a part to migration. Like coots and spoonbills. Coots and spoonbills. Uh, that means uh, predator, uh, predatory of our country may be example of partial migration is there. And total migration. When the, all the members of the species. Okay. All the members of the species take a part of migration is called total migration. All the species they are going to migrate from one place to other place completely. Okay. That is called what ma? Total migration. And uh, regular migration. What is irregular migration? Okay. So when some birds, some of the birds disperse to short or long distance for a safety and food. It is called, uh, that means vagrant and irregular migration. For the food person, they are going to migrate. Then I come back again. Okay. That is a regular or uh, vagrant migration. Hirions. Hirons. Hirons and black stroke. Uh, it means uh, Sigonia nigra. Sigonia nigra, the uh, glossy ibis. That is Brigadis uh, falcinialis. Uh, uh, spotted eagle. Aquila clanga. And be it a Meropus apiaster, these are the um, uh, birds they are going to regular migration. And daily migration. Okay, so the birds make daily journey from their uh, nest by the influence of environmental factors and come back again, such as the temperature, light, humidity, also called daily, uh, daily migration. Daily migration means. So the birds make daily journey for the food purpose, for the water purpose, for the, so whatever, any purpose, right? They are getting uh, mainly the food, mainly scarcity, environmental changes, environmental factors like uh, temperature, light and humidity. So these are the one of the factors, environmental factors. Examples, crows, examples, what about crows? Crows, herons and sterlings, these are the these are the birds they are going to migrate in uh, different areas, right? And seasonal migration. Is my seasonal migration. Remember one thing. Some birds migrate at a different season, different seasons of the year, the food, the breeding are called seasonal migration. Like example, rugus, swifts, swallows, etc. They migrate from south to north during summer. These birds are called summer visitors. These birds are called summer visitors. What are the examples? Cuckoos, swifts, and swifts. Again, there are some birds like uh, again there are some birds like snow bunting, red wing, shorelock, grey flower, etc., which migrate from north to south during the winter. They are called winter visitors. Okay, like what are the ma? So that is a uh, red uh, bunting bird, red wing, shore lark, grey flower. So which are moved from north to south. They are called winter visitors, right? So this is a uh, one of the important thing. Okay, now next nocturnal and diurnal, nocturnal and diurnal flight migration. What is diurnal migration? Large birds like crows, like robins, like swallows, like hacks, like jays, like bluebirds, like pelicans, like cranes, like goose, etc. These birds migrate during the daytime for food. Okay, so this is called diurnal uh, birds. Few of the birds they are going to for the food, for the breeding, for the population, for the environmental changes, the birds are going to, in the night time, that is called nocturnal migration. So nocturnal migration, of some small-sized birds, are fasserine groups like sparrows, wabblers, 
etc., migrate in darkness for nocturnal birds. The darkness of the light, that darkness of the night gives them protection for their enemies. Protection for their enemies. So this is a very important. And uh, next, what is my, what is the general pattern of the migration? General pattern of the migration. The flux of the birds assembling before the migration southwards, probably common in starling, so like uh, on the power, power pole line. Migrating waders in the uh, Rebook Bay, Western Australia, so like that, these are the facts. Okay. The migration is a regular season movement, already told you. Often the north and south are taken by many species birds. Bird movements include those made response to food availability, habitat, weather, uh, weather. Sometimes journey are not termed to true to, to migration because they are irregular. Irregular and uh, uh, mainly only one direction. The migration of the marked by annual annual seasonality, non-migratory birds are said to be resident or sedentary. Approximately 1800 of the world. Okay, 10,000 of bird species they are long distance migrants. Okay, 1800 birds are they are uh, not migrating. Nearly 10,000 bird species uh, they are going to migrating from one place to other place. Many many bird population migrate long distances, a long flyway. The most common, common pattern involving flight north in the spring to breed in the temperature or Arctic summer and return to autumn wintering grounds. In the summer season, they are going to migrate, then again, in winter season, they come back. This is a, one of the migrating we are seeing. So, the primary motivation of the migration appears to for the food. For example, some of hummingbirds. For some of the humming birds choose and not migrate fed through the winter. Also, their long days of north and summer provide excellent time for breeding birds feed their young one. These helps to diurnal birds to produce larger clutches than related to non-migratory species that remain in the tropics as it is short term in autumn. The birds return to warmer where the availability of food supply, where is a little one, a little with the season, they come back. Okay. So these are the important. Uh, okay. Within a population, it is common different ages and sexes have different patterns of the timing and distance. For example, a female uh, chaffinches uh, fringilla, they are uh, eastern. Uh, Penoscana migrate earlier than males, not either. So some of the some of the fishes, like some of the uh, species, uh, uh, sometime male to be migrating, sometime female to be migrating. So here, one of the population we are observing, right? Okay, most migrating uh, migrations birds within the birds starting off uh, mainly. See? Starting, uh, starting off in a broad front, often the front narrows into one or more preferred routes termed as a flyways. The birds which are going to move from uh, starting off and uh, to be going to one place to other place through the and return to come back their home through the flyways also there. Okay, and uh, many of, if not most, the birds migrating flux. Large birds flying in flux reduces in their energy cost. Goose in a V formation may conserve. So for the before they are going to migrating, so the, the bones must be form V. That is a circular bone should be like very important. That means the V formation may conserve 12 to 20 percent of the energy they have would need to fly alone. For example, red thorns, poultries, contas, and uh, uh, Donlins and uh, Aldrich Alpina were found in a radar study to fly 5 kilometers per hour, 5 kilometers per hour faster in flux than when they were flying alone. Okay, now. So they reduce their weight, okay, 
and they store their energy for they are flying uh, nearly uh, mainly for uh, for uh, our uh, 5 kilometers per place, right see uh, these are called uh, northern pintail northern pintail uh, skeleton have been found high in the himalayas okay this type of uh, species uh, which are observed in the himalayan mountains right so the bird the birds fly at varying altitudes during the migration and expedition to mount everest pond skeletons of the north uh, mainly this northern pintali pintail uh, that is uh, anas acuta anas acuta block tail uh, godwit limiso limiso at uh, 5000 meters that means uh, 6, 16000 feet they are present and kumbu also and goose also which are uh, present in the gps uh, up to 6540 meters nearly 21460 feet they are going to uh, fly okay Himalayans at the same time engaging their highest rate uh, climbing altitude by an board. That means, uh, uh, Padma, anecdotal reports them flying much higher at to corro corroborated with any direct evidence. Okay, these birds, the seabirds fly low. The seabirds are fly low over water, but again altitude when the crossing line. And the reserve pattern is seen in the land birds. However, most migration range nearly the land birds, okay, nearly they are unable to fly. That's why they are going to migrate in nearly 150 to 600 meters, like 492, uh, like 1970 feet. Because of these are the non migratory birds. So that means not non flying birds. Birds strike aviation records from the United States. Too. So most collision, most collisions occur below 600 meters, al at almost none, nearly uh, 800 meters, is 5,900 feet they are going to strike. Okay, the birds migrate, migration is not uh, limited to birds that can fly. Most species of the penguin migrate by swimming. So this penguin is flying is not only cause the penguin also going to migrate like uh, by swimming these routes can cover over nearly uh, 1000 kilometers nearly uh, 620 miles okay the dusky grus the dusky grus they perform altitudinal migration mostly by walking dusky grus they are going to migrating from altitudinal migration that means bottom to more himalayan and uh, so Novia Helodia, Novia Helodia in Australia have been observed and they take long distance movement, movement on foot during droughts, during the droughts. Okay, these are the uh, non-flying, that means non-flying uh, birds, they are going to migrating through the food, through the swimming, etc, uh, etc, et right? So, and disadvantage of the bird migration, many eggs are not Many eggs are not able to, what is it, many eggs are not able to reach destination, okay, because they die during the occurrence of continuous, continuous tyrosome journey, okay. Few of the younger birds, they are going to migrate long distance. Few of the birds are going to die, okay, that is one of the cons. So due to sudden changes in the climate, such as storms and hurricanes, Fog are, these are fog are the cause of for the death of migratory birds. The birds, some of the birds population going to uh, one of the disadvantage, they are going to migrate long distance due to the cyclones, uh, due to the storm, due to the environmental changes, due to the form, the birds are going to death. That is one of the disadvantage. Okay, that is one of the important things. Sometimes man-made height, that means man-made high tools and light uh, houses cause the death of migratory birds. Sometimes in the in this uh, in the house there is no man. In that the case there is no food, there is no water for the bird. For the bird, the birds are going to the birds are going to die. Okay, right. So they shoot this poor bird just for their own leisure and amusement. 
okay so these are all the important uh, of the what ma especially for uh, the migration migration means the birds for the food for the scarcity for the population for the breeding the birds they are going to migrate from one place to other place migration means which is having two types immigration and immigration immigration and immigration very very important so immigration means the birds which are going to move from home to others other places that immigration get back that is called what ma so that ma that get back vice versa that is called uh, what is that ma migration so this is a uh, one of the important uh, of migration okay now let us uh, okay now let us go to flight adaptation in birds okay flight adaptation in birds let us go to discussing uh, what is a flight adaptation uh, introduction mainly the introduction bird constitute well defined a group of vertebrate animal especially designed designed and adapted for a aerial mode of life they are successfully uh, flying in the air that's why aerotic uh, a, a, aerial mode they evolve not only wings but many other adaptation that make it possible to fly like feathers makes body light and provide elucidation hollow bones reduce their body weight a replacement of the jaw bones teeth with beak many four features many more features all these changes can be studied under the morphological anatomical and the physical physiological changes responsible for uh, flight adaptations okay next what are the morphological adaptations okay so number 1 body contour or shape number 2 compact to body number 3 body covering feathers number 4 four limbs modified into wings Number five, short uh, tail. Number six, beak. Number seven, mobile neck and head. Number eight, bipedal locomotion. Number nine, integument. Number ten, large muscles of flight and flight muscles muscles are there. Muscles of flight and flight muscles, like perching, is one of the important morphological adaptations, right? so number 1 morphological adaptation number 1 body shape what is it ma body shape so how their body to be construct the birds they are going to migrating from one place to other place right number 1 that is body shape birds have short light and compact body birds have short light and compact body as compared to other animals as compared to other animals most organs and large muscles are located near the center of gravity which is a slight which is slightly below and behind the wings to provide better balancing during the light this is the body shape uh, is one of the important fact they are going to migrate from one place to other and compact body the body is compact light and strong the body weight should be what ma compact light that means compressed strongly dorso uh, strong dorsally heavier ventrally strong dorsally heavier ventrally attachment of the wings attachment of the wings high and thorax the wings are attached to high and thorax the light organs like uh, lungs and sacs uh, position 
I, the heavy muscles reached centrally are other fear threads that help to inflate. Okay, this is a compact of the one of the morphological adaptation also. See, we are observing uh, flight adaptation, the diagram. See, uh, uh, teeth is, the teeth is modified to beak, mobile neck, okay, uh, streamlined, splendid shaped body, powerful flight framework, okay, four limbs modified as a wings, okay, light but strong dramatic skeleton framework, okay, light insultating feather covering, but the reducing of their body weight, bipedal locomotion, um, perching toes, short tail bearing a long uh, red trace sub. These are the one of the fantastic body mechanism, morphological characters are they, for their birds are easily migrating from one place to other place for the flying. Okay, like now, next one, next morphological character, that is feathers. That is, the body covered with the feathers, the body covered with the feathers, the feathers are smooth, direct, the smooth and directed backwards and closely fitting which make the body streamline and reduce friction during the flight. It lightens the body, it lightens the body weight and protects itself from the effect on environmental temperature. Okay. So they also have wide surface area for striking the hair. So light feathers are present in the body. That's why it easily reduces their body weight, lightness of the body weight and easily fly. That is one of the morphological character. And feathers are to the body buoyancy. It is added to the body buoyancy. It uh, insulted the body and prevents any loss of the heat from the body. So this buoyancy which covered uh, with uh, looking like insulator, this insulator should not remove the energy, should not loss the energy from the body. Okay, they prevent the body to the loss of their weight from the body. They don't lose their weight. They don't lose their uh, energy from body to outside. They store their energy. That is one of the important factors. This helps the birds to bear a low temperature at higher altitude. Remember one thing. So the birds, they are present in the high altitude, low temperature, because of the body which is having more uh, uh, heat, more energy, because they don't lost their energy, right? And adaptation in feathers. Adaptation in feathers. What are the important feathers? Are wings are they? So, shaft, wing, feather structure like shaft, the bore, burble, hook. Okay? So, these are the different feather adjustment is there. Next, wings. Four limbs modified into wings. Padma, the four limbs are modified into wings. These four limbs are modified to wings, which is the only organ of flight. These four limbs are weaker. these four limbs are uh, reduce their weight and modified to form of wings. It is one of the only for flight. This consists of framework of bones, muscles, nerves, feathers. Okay, blood vessels. These wings have large surface of area. They also support the board in the air. The wings have thick, strong leading edge with a concave lower surface. Concave lower surface, convex upper surface. Upper surface is convex, lower surface is convex, uh, concave. This helps to increase the air pressure below and reduce their air pressure. Increasing air pressure below and reducing the air pressure in above. Okay, above is remember one thing, ma. Convex below is concave. In that the case, so helping increasing air pressure below, reducing air pressure above. 
So thus the bird, the bird can fly upward and forward during the flight. During the flight. Next. Okay. So next one, what about perching? Perching is a one of the one of the character to uh, move from one place to other place uh, flying easily. When the birds when the birds sit on the branch, the birds sit on the branch of the tree. It toes it toes to wrap around of the twig, around of the twig. This is known as perching. The muscles are so well developed. For example, this is a branch ma. So the board, the board to be going to what ma? Uh, wrap around the twig, around the twig. Okay. So easily, uh, easily the muscles are so well developed that uh, uh, the perching process, the board can be easily sleep in that uh, position without failing, without falling. That is perching is one of the fantastic mechanism for the flight. Short tail, the tail beards long feathers that spread like fan, spread like a fan and function as a ruder during the flight. They also help in balancing, lifting, okay, steering while flighting and perching. This is the short tail is one of the important. And um, next one, beak. Beak is a compensate the function of the four limbs. The beak is a compensate the function of the four limbs because of uh, uh, intaking of food material. Okay, mobile neck and head is one of the factors. The birds have a long and flexible neck, which help the movement. Head important the various functions. They possess orny beak, which orny beak which help them pick the grains and insects while feeding. The beak which is a uh, beak and teeth that teeth are modified teeth and nose are modified to beak because of they lost their weight their body weight to reduce that is one of the adaptation next bipedal locomotion bipedal locomotion the anterior part of the body anterior part of the body birds help you in taking a uh, take off uh, during the flight the anterior part of the body also help Birds to birds to the land. The hind limbs help to locomotion on the land. They can support. They can support the entire body weight on the birds. So the bipedal locomotion. So the four limbs are which are modified to wings, which are helpful for the uh, flighting and bipedal. So the hind limbs are modified. Hind limbs are which are helpful for the bipedal locomotion. Okay. So this is what the very important. And mobile neck and head already told you. Neck of the bird, so neck of the bird is very long and flexible provide mobility of the neck and freedom of the movement of the head. Bipedal locomotion due to the modification of four limb into wings and balance and support the entire weight of the body. Okay, integument. Loose skin is responsible for the Extensive movement. Loose skin is responsible for the extensive movement of the skeletal musculature. Musculature. Okay, loose skin of the bird, which is responsible for the extension movement of the skeletal musculature. And next adaptation, anatomical adaptation. Okay, anatomical adaptation. So, what is anatomical adaptation? So, here endoskeleton. How the endoskeleton is designed, especially for uh, endoskeleton. The endoskeleton, many adaptations are seen in the skeleton of the birds. Excuse me, one minute. Okay, many adaptations are seen in the skeleton, skeleton of the birds. Most of the bones are pneumatic, pneumatic, and filled with air sacs instead of bone marrow. These bones are lightweight, pneumatic bones are there, which are filled with air sacs instead of instead of bone marrow. The bone marrow is not there; they are filled with air sacs. Skull bones are light. Skull bones are light, and most of them fuse together. 
that means uncinate process uncinate process of thoracic rib and uh, uncinate process of thoracic rib this region right, help to producing com uh, that means compactness compactness that means in this region the compact uh, and to be lightweight to become a lightweight and a form a form a form fulcrum but ma fulcrum for the action of the wings so the wings the fulcrum should be formed filled of wings and ribs are formed a fulcrum shortening of cord style but ma shortening of caudal style shortening of caudal style and formation of fibro style but ma shortening of caudal style and formation fibro style for the stability in the head fusion of pelvis fusion of pelvis and sin sacrum uh, pelvic uh, that means the pelvic bone that is present in the uh, hind uh, wings uh, hind uh, hind limbs okay bipedal locomotion in that uh, uh, tail region sacrum sin sacrum is there pelvis and sin sacrum provide form of attachment um, to the legs attachment to the legs sternum greatly expanded sternum is greatly expanded provided with the mid provided with the mid ventral ridge so the sternum greatly expanded provided with the mid ventral ridge or keel in flying birds keel in flying birds okay next see we are observing the diagram okay <clears throat> see the skull is a narrow neck is very long neck is there wishbone is present porcai a rib gauge you see here what happened ma the sternum is very uh, very wide in the form of keel and femur to less fibula okay the phalange metacarpals so both are light feet and uh, uncinate bone also there the scapula uncinate bone also there tail bone very very less tail bone is present these are the simply the bone marrow is not there simply the typical bone hollow with the criss cross struts the bone marrow is replaced by the hair sacs the bone marrow which is replaced by hair sacs also there in the cervical uh, endoskeletal system which is helpful to fly and skull we are going to discussing skull skull is a composed of thin the skull is a composed of thin and hollow bones which is extremely light in the light proportion to rest of the body due to elimination of heavy jaw elimination of heavy jaw rare jaws are reduced bones are reduced all are fused and one of the skull heavy jaw and jaw muscles and teeth the jaw of chewing as large replaced by gill jaws are reduced na these jaws are not there in the birds these jaws are replaced by in the stomach already dies uh, dies system we discussed okay in the dies system gizzard also there the gizzard to be grinding so the skull usually represent less than 1% of the 1% of body total body weight total body weight the skull is only 1% only for example okay you can take 3 kg 4 kg just 1% is there for the skull okay total body weight and flight muscles what is it ma flight muscles what are the flight muscles are there so we are seeing in the flight muscles are enormous it's huge enormous as they have to generate the thrust and a vigorous movement of the wings during the flight what are the muscles are the flight muscles on the breast flight muscles on the breast are called do what ma greatly developed what are the muscles are there pectoralis major which is located lower the wings pectoralis minors elevate the wings okay pectoralis major lower the wings pectoralis minor elevate the wings wings are there so these are the see we are observing the wing the pectoralis uh, here lower of the pectoralis major major lower of the wings lower portion of the wings they are present pectoral minor to elevate the 
wings. These are the uh, important uh, uh, wings uh, muscles are there. And uh, between these uh, pectoral major pectoral minor, porocoid also present. That is porocoid also present. Uh, porocoid branchial is also present. These are the muscles. Flight muscles are there. What are the flight muscles? Come on, tell me. Pectoral is major. Pectoral is minor. And coracoid bronchialis, these are the flight muscles are there in this words. Pectoralis pulls wings down. This pectorals, what ma? Uh, pectoralis pulls down. Pectoralis major pulls down. Pectoralis major, pull, that means pulls up. This is what uh, upper wing bone. This is what a uh, very important thing. And uh, physiological adaptation. Physiological adaptation. Okay. What are the physiological adaptation? Okay. So, may Adibul Ma, Salma, Rajeshwari, Maha, Nandini. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Right. Okay. Physiological adaptation. What are the physiological adaptations are there? Circulatory system, how they are developed. Okay. Circulatory system, mainly, simply see. Rapid supply of oxygen is required for the blood due to high metabolic rate in birds. Therefore, the birds require an efficient circulatory system. Birds have well-developed chamber. That means four chambered heart is there that perform due to double circulation. This is the prevents mixing of oxygenated, mixing oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. Also, the birds contain a large amount of hemoglobin in their red blood cells, which help to pick uh, aeration for the tissue. So the circulatory system well developed one. That's, uh, that means closer type of circular system, four chambered heart is present, the heart which is having well developed, the heart which is pumped out easily, the heart which is to, what happened ma? To be uh, easily to distribute the oxygenated, deoxygenated blood. And, uh, and these blood, uh, blood is also which contains more hemoglobin in the red blood cells. And uh, warm blooded. Birds are warm blooded. That is one of the factors. The birds are warm blooded animals. The temperature of the body, the birds remain high and due to not change with the change of the environment. These are what ma? Warm blooded animals because of this should not change their temperature to compare with the body, compare with the environmental temperature. That's why the birds, uh, the birds which are living in the high altitude, that means more Himalayans. The particular temperature is there because of warm blooded because in the Himalayan nearly 4 to 10, uh, 10 uh, degrees Celsius is there, very cold. In that the case, the body which is also one of the, the body temperature also to control. One of, that is called one of the like adaptation mechanism. And excretory system. The nitrogen waste is converted to a toxic organic compound such as uric acid and it, that means urates. So this nitrogen waste material to that means uric acid. They have no urinary bladder, urinary tubules, excretory absorb water because of removing one thing. One, these birds are to release what I mean, fecal material, uric acid, crystal uric acid, not uh, liquid. Okay, so that is one of the important uh, to what I mean, to control their body water. And urinary tubules sufficiently absorb their water. If there is any water is there on the urine, they can absorb. That means solid material to be released outside. Okay, now circulatory system, we have the double loop circulatory system, four chambered heart. Okay, uh, right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle. Okay, uh, see, uh, the, the deoxygen bed enters once, again, uh, oxygen bed enters second. Okay, so that is. Uh, uh, oxygen deoxygen blood uh, received from uh, various organs through the enters the right atrium and oxygenated blood to receive from lungs through the air sacs through the this left atrium, right? This is one. And diet system. What are the diet system also? The diet system also, it will be asking, uh, it will be asking the diet system of the bird. It is also one of the mechanism. The diet system is compact and effective. Effective, right? So, what is that? Ma? The diet system parts, esophagus, elementary esophagus, crop, stomach is not there, crop is there, liver, 
proventriculus, pancreas, gizzard, intestine, and cloaca is there. So the digestive system also to be compressed, compact, and effective. The boards are high. The boards are have very high rate of metabolism. Therefore, food digests rapidly. Food digests rapidly. The because of during the flight, the the flight must be required more energy, na? The flight required more energy. That's why. So, the digestion is more required more rapidly. The length of the rectum is reduced. The length of the rectum is reduced because of the minimum undigested weight in it. They have no gallbladder which reduce their weight. Okay, rectum is not length because the reduce of their body weight. Gallbladder is not there because of the reduce their body weight. Everything to be what will reduce their body weight for the flight, for the flying. Okay. So respiratory system. Remember one thing. Okay, the respiratory system of the birds is designed in a such a manner that the food is oxidized rapidly, and large amount of the energy is liberated since the metabolism rate is higher. A large number of oxygen molecules are required for the body because of during the flight, during the flight, uh, during the fly, uh, flying, uh, okay, flying process, the the cells required more energy. That's why rapidly respiration required. Large number of oxygen molecules required. For this, the lungs are provided with the unique system of air sacs. Nine air sacs are designed, which occupy their entire. The nine air sacs are to occupy which entire space between the internal organs. Internal organs completely. The air sacs are occupied. Okay. So that is what these are the air sacs are there. Total all the air sacs are completely occupied. Okay, so what are those? What are those uh, in the respiratory system? Simple, simply what ma? Uh, nostrils, trachea. Uh, what ma? What is that ma? Cervical sac, syrinx, bronchus. Okay. Extra uh, extra thoracic cavity of sac. Okay, and uh, next one of posterior thoracic abdominal sacs are there. Abdominal sacs are there. So there's a totally four plates are singly there. And reproductive system. The ovaries and testes are reduced in size. It is also one of the reduce their body weight for the flying. Right, ovaries and testes are produced in size except in the breeding season. Except in the breeding season, usually only one functional worry is present. Only one functional worry is present. Okay. In a, see, worry is present in most of the birds, and secondary worry. That means uh, second worry is greatly reduced to decrease weight of the body. Only one worry is present, ma. Female liver is displaced. Female liver is displaced right to compress you, compensate for weight difference. Only one ovary is present, not second ovary, because of their reduce their body weight. But in the case of birds, free generally, free generally both ovaries and ovaries are present. So in the that means non flying and non flying birds, they are. Having or both the what ma? Or reproductive system, ovaries and ovary ducts are there. And uh, this because of the during the hunting this season, the hunting these birds have two pawns and the prey with great force and the struggling prey can kick and break the eggs in the reproductive system. Eggs develop into two ovaries can compensate for this loss. Okay, this is one of the important. See, reproductive system, female and male. Okay, so female uh, only right uh, that means uh, left ovary, left ovary duct, uterus is present, but right are absent. Right are absent. Remembering one thing, so right ovary is not there. Okay, ovary, ovary duct, and uterus and cloaca also there in the female. Okay, this is one very important thing. Okay, so whereas a male, both are present. 
okay test is ureta and troika and vasa differentia both are percents so this is a, one of the important thing okay so the evolution of flight so the, that means what ma morphological adaptation okay anatomical adaptation biological adaptation and uh, so right skeleton system these are the effect uh, which are there so the evolution of flight has provided birds with many physical features in addition to wings and feathers on way to reduce their body weight in the birds by the fusion and elimination of some unnecessary bones so that is called nematization of the remaining remaining uh, ones not only are some bones of bird hollow but many of the larger ones are connected to the air sacs and respiratory system to keep the cylindrical walls like birds major wings bones sudden changes bones have internal compressive frame the bones are reduce their weight their rate with their reduce their weight and compress to be form one network and and to become a, uh, to become a very strong and coracoid parcular scapula coracoid parcular scapula form a strong and well built one keyed adaptation fusing caudal bones into single tagostyle coracoid bone parcular bone scapula bone to be built one strong bone caudal bones to uh, uh, that means uh, to be form a single I go style, which support the tail feathers. Birds also lack the teeth. And birds have uncinate process on the ribs. Uncinate process in the ribs. These are hooked extension of the bone, which helps to strengthen the rib cage, overlapping with the rib behind them. There, practically every organ and system has been modified in relation to the flight. okay so uh, that means what about the different adaptations like uh, uh, physiological adaptations anatomical adaptations physiological that means uh, biological adaptations and environmental adaptations everything and muscles flight muscles okay which are uh, responsible for what ma so for example flight muscles so pectoral is major pectoral is minor coracoid bronchitis is okay these are the muscles which are uh, responsible for the what ma the birds are they are going to migrate from one place to other place so this is the okay this the process what is it ma this is the process of uh, completely the bird migration and uh, flight adaptation from the, these two topics compulsory will uh, but ma asking uh, in the examination the second semester okay and all of you to be uh, prepare uh, along with these classes you must be prepare uh, uh, what ma your exams also very so uh, exams also coming very soon the august 4th onwards but ma august 4th onwards your exams should start okay na so all of you must be prepared thoroughly and uh, very very important thing and uh, tomorrow i should take uh, one more important topics parental care in abbeyans and retrograde retrogressive metamorphosis in uh, rho cordata i will take these two and one first semester topic also will take that is uh, periphetus epinetis periphetus epinetis uh, should take okay right okay na today the session is completed any doubts ma no doubt no sir no sir okay okay today uh, till the the session is completed now tomorrow we'll continue the next session and those who are missed this today class and uh, just uh, after one hour after one and a half hour i should uh, post in uh, particular i should upload in uh, youtube also you must be seen youtube also okay in premier session will come don't miss it you must be seen in youtube also okay na thank you very much okay so all of you this is sir rajol ji